Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house. Our Lord Jesus holds up a little child as a model for Christian living. Hmm. What does this mean?
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I'll confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose strength is made perfect in weakness, grant us humility and childlike faith that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, 
your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah 11. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me. They devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind. Let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading, James 3, who is wise and understanding among you, by his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this? that your passions are at war within you. You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealously over the spirit that is made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. The disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee, and Jesus did not want anyone to know. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, 
the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. Whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was Come on up, children. Bring your offerings to Jesus. Right here. Silas, right here, right here. Come on, guys. Right here, put it right here. Okay. Who else needs an offering for Jesus? Anybody else? Right here, honey. Right there, put it right there. Right here, honey. Yeah. Oh, come on, right here. And then as soon as you put down, we can, we can sit down. Oh, thank you. You're so... Oh, come here, honey. Come here. Right here. You're offering to Jesus right here. Right here. Oh, thank you. And you know what Jesus just talked about in the Bible? He talked about children. In fact, Silas, you want to come here to pastor? Can you come here? You know what Jesus did? There is a little boy or girl right next to him. And he, thank you, Silas. And he picked up the little child and said, this is how you are to be as a follower of Jesus like a little child. So let me ask you, uh, did you have fun driving over to church this morning? Pastor, you didn't drive the car, did you? Pastor, you're so silly, I don't drive a car. <laughs> Isn't it silly? Well, no, you don't have to worry about that. Did you notice, and I just noticed this last night, Turn around and look up, straight up. Look at that flickering. Up, oh, we got a light that's about to go out. Are you thinking about, Pastor, how are we going to change that light bulb? You're not thinking about that. No. You're just coming up there to hear about Jesus. 
And you know what Jesus says in the Bible? Perfect. So as you grow up, what's the most important thing? There's going to be lots of things. But to hear Jesus, to trust in Jesus, to love Jesus, the one who loves us, it's quite something. He holds up a little child. Let's pray to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for holding up that little child, little boy or girl, and said, hmm, this is how we are to be before you and trusting you and living for you. In your name we pray. Uh, What do we say? Amen. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Silas.
So it wasn't a public lecture. It wasn't a preacher standing on a street corner letting one, everyone hear about what he was about to say. And it wasn't teaching available on the main news channels. It was intended for a private lesson on kingdom matters. Your Lord Jesus was grounding his apostles privately for church work, even for their own lives. They must get this right or the devil and the delicious temptations of the world will simply overwhelm them. They must get this foundation right as they preach and through their preaching, the Holy Spirit makes Christians and raises up congregations. This was essential work, foundational work. If you don't get the foundation right, the structure cracks and falls. So also here, with their faith, and with yours. Now get the backdrop. The apostles had witnessed many things. Jesus had healed a withered hand in Mark chapter 3. By the mere speaking, he quieted the stormy sea of Galilee. Mark chapter 4. And as we heard last week in Mark 9, he cast out a very stubborn demon from a little boy. And he calmed the heart of the little boy's distressed dad. Ah, they could see this power at work through Jesus. No one could do these powerful miracles but God. What does this mean? Maybe these powerful miracles and signs were to set the pattern for Christian ministry, set the pattern for congregational life, set the pattern for individual Christians you feel distressed, you're broken, seek power and signs. But seeking stability for life based on visible power is not God's way. Is this how he promises to sustain you? Is this where you find your hope and healing and joy? If it's so, then our Lord Jesus Christ would go there in this private instruction on the road. Nobody had access to this Zoom call. <laughs> what does Jesus say? Mark 9, 31. The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days, he will rise. What? So ridiculous. So offensive. Spit this suggestion right out of your mouth. It tastes something that is spoiled. Spit it out. No, my dear disciples, if you don't understand this, you don't get me or the kingdom. Your faith will dwindle and even die and your life will be one power outage after another. 
Oh, power. Let's talk about power. Hmm. Pastor, how can we get more power to live a successful, victorious life? Well, here's the power. Being like a little child. Act. Remain always as a helpless little child. Completely dependent upon another. And his name is Jesus Christ. There's no way, and you can't convince me otherwise, that anyone in this congregation this morning would have come up with that suggestion. And what do we have in America? And when I was in Africa for all these multiple trips, it's the same way. We would point to these successful pastors, how they look right, speak right, all their powerful rhetoric. Let's be like them. And look how wealth, health, and success, that's where I want to go. That's what I got to do. How do I get there? I want to be an outstanding believer like them. And Jesus holds up a little child. <laughs> Helpless, dependent solely on the one who is crucified on the cross. And then I found one writer said this. In our 20th century, 21st century, doesn't matter, we have an understanding of little children as projections of innocence. They're imaginative creative. They're delightful children. And then this author writes this. In the ancient world, it was different. In fact, very likely when you look at the moms who are bringing little infants to Jesus in Luke chapter 18, almost certainly, almost certainly, they're asking for Jesus to touch their little babies. Why? Because they're sick and dying. Infant mortality rate at that time reached as high as 30% at birth. Another 30% of live births were dead by age six. And another 60% were dead by age 16. Children were always the first to suffer from famine, war, disease, and dislocation. Children had little status within the community. The status of children was no higher than a slave. And Jesus holds up a little child. Can you imagine what the disciples thought in this private instruction? The children were the most, most vulnerable of that culture. If you understand that, you understand the point of this text. Your only hope is Jesus. I just love it when the kids come up here. Like I said, they weren't worried about the location of Trinity, it's 1122 West Central Parkway. They weren't worried like 
budgets. They aren't concerned about who the next associate pastor is going to be. Why? God's got it all figured out. They aren't concerned whether they're going to get sick. God's got them. No, they just come up here like frolicking. <laughs> and I thought of that Old Testament text, the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, where it talks about those who are, who are in the righteousness of Christ, the son of righteousness beneath his marvelous glow of mercy. And then Malachi 4, you shall go out leaping like calves into the, out of the stall. We may not have many ranchers here, but when the stall is open, the young calves just kick up their heels. <laughs> but we do have many who have pets, and when you come home, what do your dogs do? Some of them, we used to have a Boston Terrier bulldog at the Golther house, and we'd come home, I'd come home from school, and Mickey was his name, and he would just run around in circles and stand on his back legs like this. So run around in circles and stand on your back, back legs like this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank the good Lord. He's got you covered. He's got all the big stuff covered. One professor writes this, that our Christian life, because we're justified by God's blood in Christ, that our life is like carte blanche. It's a French term for blank or white paper. Our baptismal life, we can write it with God's grace and mercy to love him and to serve others. He even says, life lived with a joy-filled, scattered, reckless abandon of doing good and helping others. Living life as if there's not a care in the world. Uh, Randy, I'm, it's bad news, isn't it? I've got to let you go. You're being riffed. Well, the Lord's going to have to figure this one out. I'll trust him. like a little child. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all your understanding will keep your hearts and minds in your wonderful Savior, Jesus. Amen. We stand and sing.
we stand to pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For humility, that God who opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble would help us to submit to him and resist the devil, that he would flee from us. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit would pacify our passions and that we would not be ruled by the jealousy and selfish ambition that give rise to disorder in every vile practice. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord would uphold this world in his order for the church, that she would be defended from all enemies, for our homes, that the Lord would bless parents and children in service toward each other and faith until life's end. And for the government, that God would grant all authorities health and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and those in any need, Penny Sweat, Eric Shocker, Jason Abramowski, Lonnie Grothus, Michael Finkston, Arlene Eichstadt, Jared Gravert, Alvin Kranschke, and those we name in our hearts at this moment. Let us pray to the Lord. For those celebrating wedding anniversaries, Mo and Linda Dierks, Tim and Susan Eckert, Larry and Pat Gaynor, Gary and Sue Shocker, Bob and Lana Chapman, Matt and Tina Knutson. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who draw near to the altar today, that in repentance, with cleansed hands and purified hearts, we may receive Christ, who draws near to us in his body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. O Lord of hosts, grant that what we ask from you may not be squandered after our passions, but sought rightly in faith, that we may receive them and put them to service for you and our neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Lord's house. I always love to say that. I do that for the chapel kids' services on Wednesday also. And the kids just love to hear about Jesus. It's so wonderful. Take note of all the many things happening, you know, on the highlights, Bible studies, etc. Uh, we're gearing up to unfold the whole generosity effort. You know, the congregation voted to do that a year ago. I like to describe it as understanding the baptismal life beneath our generous God. So it starts in October. The books are available in the back. You can sign up. And I'm writing up Bible studies that go with that. Uh, I'm just starting the second week of adult instruction class, God's workmanship class. Do you know of any, anybody who would love to go through the basics of the faith in a simple but in-depth way, a joyful way? Uh, it's not too late to start. Uh, so Tuesday night, 6.30 to 8. Today we have a congregational voters meeting on whether to hire the Aspen Architect Group to go forward for the next six months and have them examine our outside, with outside eyes, our facility. So a repurposing, perhaps, of our facility space. We don't know if we're, if we're out, of, out, of, uh, out of space or we need to repurpose space or we need to repurpose space and expand space. Hmm. So come and give us your thoughts and... Pray about it and vote. Okay, uh, I think that's enough. Uh, God's peace be with you.